Hi everyone and welcome to another Nature Diaries. Today is quite exciting, we're actually in a dune system in North Wales and it's one of the very few places in the UK where sand lizards are actually still found. So the sand lizards were rewilded here or reintroduced here and we're just going to have a look around and show you some of their habitat. This species is heavily protected so we're certainly not going to go off the paths and rummage around for them. So they're going to be difficult to find. So again, we might not see any, but we'll talk about the habitat, tell you a little bit about the species, and tell you why this species is so threatened. Now the sand lizard really favours sandy dune systems and sandy heathlands and these uh, habitats are becoming rarer and rarer in the UK so there's no doubt that habitat loss poses the biggest threat to the sand lizard. So on the reserve we're on now there's actually a massive caravan park and also an adjacent golf course but it's nice to see some mitigation in place such as this fenced off area here where it's keeping people off the dune system and it gives the lizards and other wildlife sort of a respite from people walking walking near them and disturbing them. just on the outskirts of the conservation area and we're looking in and we think we found the entrance to a couple of uh, sand lizard burrows so this makes this species more elusive because they actually can dig burrows and these burrows can go a meter deep so they normally go down a few centimeters then have a sharp turn and the bigger ones can go down a meter and sometimes they do these in the walls of rabbit warrens uh, females do lay eggs and they can lay eggs in their burrows but sometimes they will put it under like a shallow pile of sand so again, they're our, our rarest lizard, they're our only egg-laying lizard, and they're super rare, so if we get any signs, fingers crossed, we'll be well happy, but we're happy that we've seen potentially the burrows. Within the conservation area as well, there's some strategically placed paving slabs, which provide good basking spots and also areas for the lizards to go under. So we're excited to see signs of the lizards. Uh, let's hope we can find some. I just mentioned the burrows and the burrows are obviously good to uh, lay eggs but they're also a really good escape place for the animal so they can retreat in there if there's any predators especially birds of prey and corvids and so on but another thing with the burrows is they sometimes just bask at the entrance of the burrow which makes them a bit more elusive but other than basking in their burrow or on the entrance to their burrow they do like patches of plain sand like the ones behind me here so again we're remaining optimistic and hopefully we can see them the burrows are not only great places to lay eggs and hide it allows the lizards to get out the hot sun and uh, get some shade but there are aerial predators around there birds of prey corvids and gulls so it really is a great place for the animals to retreat the animals will also bask in the holes of their burrows just at the entrance which can make them even more difficult to spot but if they're not basking in the entrance of their tunnels they will prefer open sand area patches like this so we're going to remain optimistic and look out for them in addition to using their burrows for the things I've mentioned, these animals will also hibernate. So they'll emerge around April time and go into hibernation about October time. And it's the younger lizards that actually hibernate later in the year. So the adults can start going into hibernation around September time, sometimes August time. But again, the weather's always changing. Well guys, we found one, but it
but it's not the real thing. But perhaps that's not a bad thing. We really should leave these animals undisturbed, so we want to stay to the paths and keep our dogs on lead. Well, this one's huge, but in real life these animals get to around 19 centimetres and the females are a little bit shorter. Also, you can tell the difference between the males and females because they are sexually dimorphic, which means the males are different from the females. So the males will have green on the side and during the breeding season this becomes brighter, which perhaps attracts the females. Also, these animals perform something called sperm competition. So the female will breed with several males and then she'll select the sperm she chooses to fertilise her. This can help reduce inbreeding because the most distance related sperm is usually the one that uh, fertilises the eggs. Well guys, that's the end of Nature Diaries today. So we hope you enjoyed uh, coming on this journey with us looking for the UK's rarest lizard. We didn't find any, but there's a little clip here so you can see what it looks like. But guys, that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this Nature Diaries and you've enjoyed looking for the UK's rarest lizard with us. It's really important we protect these species and reintroducing them and rewilding them can really help. So if you want to come on other journeys with us, please click subscribe and like this video. And also if you've seen sand lizards, just comment below. And uh, as always, we'll see you in the next one.